fever. What is it? What does it mean? When should we seek medical advice? And what medical advice should we seek? As a parent, these are all valid questions when your child is unwell and presenting with a temperature. A fever is an elevation of body temperature above the normal daily variation of 38 degrees Celsius or above, and there are many causes, most due to self-limiting viral infections, which could be treatable at home or at non-emergency healthcare services, or it could also be a presenting feature of very serious bacterial infections, such as pneumonia and meningitis, both of which are leading causes of death and are avoidable. So how do we know what our child's fever means? This broad range of causes of febrile illness provide both a diagnostic challenge for healthcare professionals and a high degree of parental anxiety, distinguishing between children who can safely be cared for at home or in a primary care setting and ensuring quick diagnosis and treatment for those children with a threatening illness is essential. Prior to COVID-19, the number of children in England attending A&E in the UK had been continuing to increase, and evidence has shown that febrile illness is one of the most common reasons for ED consultation in children and accounts for around 10% of these attendances. This could reflect several factors, including changes in parents' health seeking behaviours, risk aversion among healthcare professionals and access to primary care and ED. Pressures on emergency care in England pose a huge burden on the NHS and reducing this burden has become a priority for policymakers. And most cases of fever due to self-limiting viral infection, it's important to understand the reasons behind these children presenting to the ED. Not only are these rates rising nationally, there's a clear difference in the northwest compared to the rest of England, and this increase in paediatric attendances has been markedly dramatic in disadvantaged cities such as Liverpool. But why is this? There is evidence to suggest that socioeconomic factors influence increasing attendance rates and also that children who come from more deprived backgrounds are more likely to develop infections. The social conditions for families in disadvantaged areas continue to deteriorate and can have consequential health outcomes. These health inequalities are both unjust and preventable, and in order to address these, it's essential to explore the pathways taken by children to hospital. There has already been work done to look at factors influencing the time of presentation and admission to hospital for children with serious infectious illness, and also the influencing factors of how parents manage their febrile child. There's a need to explore, however, any socio-economic factors related to delayed presentation and management of children with febrile illness. For example, what is the influence of socio-economic status on whether certain diagnostic tests are performed? Are there differences in the threshold to seek medical advice between more and less deprived areas? Are there differences in reasons behind attending the ED between parents from less and more deprived areas? And how does this affect the outcome for that child? This research aims to investigate the effect of SECs on clinical outcomes in healthcare in children with paediatric febrile illness. We hope that this research will help to better understand these relationships and provide a clearer health equity lens.